Is This Henry Mills was by far and away one of the best episodes of season seven because essentially all the storylines of season seven, more or less, got wrapped up and I really enjoyed what I saw. Now, there was a few little odd things that kind of bugged me and by bugged, I mean just the canon being broken is what, you know, annoyed me. But in terms of what I saw, I thought it was really, really beautiful. So the first thing I want to talk about is the flash sideways slash uh, congruent storyline that is occurring with young Henry and Regina. So before I get into that, we find out that Gothel's curse not only brought them to a land without magic, it took them back in time to 2017 before Henry went on his quest to find his own story, which was the premise of the entire season and what exactly happened in, you know, season one, season seven, episode one, Hyperion Heights, where Henry said to Regina, I'm going to find my own story. So this episode, or this episode establishes that because of Gothel's curse, they've all been stuck right before Henry goes away, which I thought was really odd. Like the, uh, the time travel aspect to the Stark curse, I didn't like because it, it seems contrived and it seems really difficult to figure out a, the timeline and like, why go back in time to 2017? But that aside, the uh, the interactions between Lana Paria and Jared Gilmore in that um, congruent storyline, so beautiful. I really loved it. Jared Gilmore, you know, I've been very critical of him, but in this episode, he got to me. I really enjoyed everything uh, that he had to say. I enjoyed when he, you know, read off his essays. I enjoyed even seeing more of his character's um internal battle with being, you know, a person born in a land without magic, but being a descendant of all these fairy tale characters and, you know, not being, you know, a fairy tale character and wanting to go off and do his own thing. But at the same time, he doesn't want to leave home. Like I really, I really got it. I loved it. I also find it funny that Storybrooke has its own college. I mean, that curse is uh, pretty powerful that it made an accredited university. So I really just enjoyed that entire storyline. And then at the end of it, is, um, you know, when Andrew J. West talks to Jared Gilmore, and we saw the trailer, we were trying to figure out why exactly is that happening, and, you know, it's because of the time travel aspect. And this is when I feel that uh, Once Upon a Time has gone Lost level. And, you know, as it is created by the writers of Lost, you really can't blame them for going there. But I think it just makes the continuity of the show very disjointed and very difficult to understand. But at the same time, I mean, it's just a fun ride. At this point, you know, there's only two episodes left. This was the third episode left of the series. So it's just kind of, I guess, enjoy it without having to um, really get too nitpicky at it. And I did. I really loved, you know, seeing Granny with Henry. I thought that was cute. I loved how Henry got a car. And I, I just really enjoyed all those interactions um, between Henry and Lana. It was very original Once Upon a Time. It was very, it kind of felt like season one, but, you know, with him growing up. Like, you know watching the show because Jared was so young we really got to watch Jared Gilmore grow up and I really it just felt uh, very um conclusive to me and I think he's actually in one, one more episode where he might interact with Andrew J West which I feel is a, uh, a timeline problem because I don't think you're supposed to interact with your older self which is exactly what he did here but at least uh, in this episode it was through a phone call and Henry older Henry didn't tell younger Henry it was him but I'm pretty sure uh, all the timeline, um, all the, you know, not timeline, all the, um, what the heck's it called? All the um, time travel stories that I've seen, Harry Potter, even Once Upon a Time, they all say, do not talk to your past self. It causes a problem. So, you know, like I said, the flash sideways uh, congruent storyline was beautiful. I really liked it. Now, um, let's talk about what happened in the present. And there was two storylines going on, and we essentially had... Regina trying to get Henry's belief to return, which was needed to break the curse. Now, we've talked about this for a long time. It doesn't make any sense. There's no reason that breaking this curse would restore magic to, you know, Hyperion Heights because it's still the land without magic, but that's just what the show wants us to believe. So apparently when you break the curse, it brings back magic as well. This curse was really manipulated vapidly by Gothel to the point that Drizella seems completely irrelevant. Uh, with this curse at all like Gothel really cast this curse you know she she tricked Regina she just used Drizella as the catalyst to do everything but this is Gothel's curse this is not Regina's curse or um, Drizella's curse so 
it, I guess the second it breaks, it brings back magic, but also Gothel at the same time can tap into magic as well. So Gothel's plan is to wipe out all humanity, and she had some really good interactions with Lana Priya here. I really enjoyed uh, the Gothel and Regina banter. Emma Booth, I think, has had some issues with dialogue. I've said that a couple times, but this episode, she nailed it. So I did enjoy that. So Regina's off on a quest to restore Henry's belief, and it takes a little bit of time. But in the end, it finally works. I mean, that poor scene where Alice and Fernandez cries because of um, Henry not believing. I, I really like that. I loved how Regina, you know, is trying to show him the adoption paper. She's showing him the photo saying it's not doctored, saying, you are my son. Come on, come on, come on, wake up. And I also thought it was crazy that the memory potion that woke up Kelly didn't wake up Henry. I thought that was really interesting as well. I guess somehow you need a little belief in order to wake up because um, apparently rationalization is belief's enemy. So, you know, Regina is just on this quest to wake him up. And in the end, she does. And again, it was beautiful. And then Regina goes after Gothel. Gothel's trying to cast a curse and, or not cast a curse, she's trying to make her plan to wipe out humanity work. Which, by the way, I will say Gothel's plan to wipe out humanity, so stupid. And the reason why I call it stupid is because we never knew what it was until last week. I feel that it should have been sprinkled throughout the show. At uh, one point, Drizella said that Gothel wanted the Dark One Dagger that never came to fruition as well. Samdi wanted the Dark One Dagger. We'll talk about Samdi in a minute. But, I, I mean, I knew that nothing bad was going to happen to these characters because, well, I knew they are all in the next couple episodes. This storyline, it didn't seem as um, climactic as it should have because I wasn't in fear of what was going to be happening. But at the same time, like when Regina brought that bat and Gothel just goes and then smashes it. I thought that was, I really liked that. Uh, poor Regina has been flung so many times by magic, but... Uh, you know, after she was flung and Henry, who has woken up, finds her, he kisses her and he woke her up and he broke the curse and magic is restored. And then there was a couple of nice scenes with uh, Margot, a.k.a. Robin and Alice. Uh, Margot is able to wake up Alice from, um, you know, essentially keeping the wipeout humanity magic happening, which, by the way, we never saw. We never saw like anyone die from this curse. The only people we saw was members of the Coven of Eight turn into plants. But uh, Coven of Eight members, there's no attachment to because we don't know who any of them are, minus Madame Leota and Madame Leota wasn't even there. Though in the beginning of the episode, Gothel did say that Regina was the eighth witch, which I thought was interesting. So uh, we had that really interesting, it's it's mixed in with, you know, stopping Gothel, but we had a, you know, a Rogers, Robin, and Alice storyline as well. And in the end, Alice is the one that defeats Gothel by turning her into a tree. It was, it was symbolic and it was beautiful. This whole episode, it was very beautiful. It was a really fun episode to watch. I very much enjoyed almost everything I saw. Um, the only thing about the episode I wasn't a massive fan of was the Cinderella and Tiana storyline. I kind of felt it was a joke because, you know, these two were supposed to be warrior princesses and, you know, I get the voodoo magic, but, you know, Samdi, you know, taps Tiana with the, Tiana's voodoo doll with the pin, you know, Tiana's in pain and then he goes, get in the closet and they just go in like, wouldn't Cinderella do something to fight him off? I know that Cinderella is Jacinda and at this point they weren't woken up, but I was like, really? Like, you're not going to fight him at all? And it was like, whatever. And then poor Samdi died. And I thought that was actually really depressing as well that Samdi died. Because a lot of people wanted to know, myself included, this past storyline between Samdi and Facilier. And as far as I know, he's dead. I don't think he's going to come back. And I thought that was really a waste of a character to kill him as well. I think that if you had done a Gothel storyline for 11 episodes and then done a Prince and the Frog storyline for another 11 episodes, that would have been a really good, you know, use of the season. You know, I would have been okay with having the Cinderella and Rapunzel, you know, mix with Gothel trying to wipe out humanity and then, you know, have the curse be cast in, you know, the first 11 and then the curse be broken by the end of the 11th episode and then have Facilier come in and he's after the Dark One dagger and then boom, in this episode, you know, the Dark One version 2 kills the person who's after his dagger. Like that would have been very, it would have felt more conclusive to me and I think it would have been a more interesting and more enjoyable season, but that didn't happen. So I don't want to get too much into that. But as I said, I really did feel that the show turned into Lost with the time travel thing because now I'm still a little confused because Regina had said to Henry in the episode, um, you know, you can't find someone who you don't know is lost, but technically future Emma, I think, and future Snow and Charming would all know that they're not there anymore. So it was just like, a, it felt like a big debacle to me because I don't understand why she needs to go back to 2017. And at the same time, we still don't know if the time in Enchanted Forest version 2 works faster than time in Enchanted Anywhere. Because, um, you know, Henry, he goes off in 2017 and then he ages and then he meets Cinderella. And then he, there's another eight-year gap 
and then you know Cinderella doesn't age. Henry is the only one that ages. Regina, you know, just because she has magic doesn't mean she's you know immortal. Rumpel's the only kind of exception to this because you know Captain Hook he was you know turned young again, but even at the you know even when he turned young there was still an eight year gap so you know Hook could have grade just a little bit. It was the time travel and the time aspect of the show was a little bit too confusing. But at the same time, for what we got in this episode, we got the comeuppance of Gothel, we got the death of Cilia, which I didn't want, but it happened. And I, I did enjoy everything that we saw. And now we have, you know, the, the last two episodes where it looks like it's going to be Rumpel versus Rumpel, which I think is going to be really interesting as well. I'll talk about the Rumpel versus Rumpel thing in the trailer review. So anyway, what did you think of Is This Henry Mills? I thought it was a great episode. I really loved the congruence uh, storybook storyline. I thought that was great. I was happy to be back in storybook. I missed the town quite a bit. I wish we could have been in Granny's Diner, but I did like going into Regina's house. I thought that was nice. I liked the phone call between Andrew J. West and Jared Gilmore quite a bit. Andrew J. West, you know, when he woke up Regina, it was so sincere. He's such a good actor, and I really feel bad for him that this kind of was his, like, you know, the show that he was starring in for the season because I, I do hope, Cross my fingers, it's not what's going to happen, but I do hope that this does not ruin his resume. Uh, I just feel that the show, you know, not a lot of people watched it, um, but he was so good in it, you know? It's I, I just want him to get a lot more work. Same with Lana Priya, obviously. But uh, I really just enjoyed all of his interactions, especially when he was, like, crying and talking to Regina, then, you know, that kiss, and he woke her up. I believe Emma woke up Henry in season one, then Regina woke up Henry in season three, and then Emma and Henry in season six, the final battle, and now in the final season, it was Emma, or Regina, and uh, um, Henry that broke the curse as well. So there's, there's a lot of beautiful interactions between... Henry is the... Henry is the... Um, the glue that holds Once Upon a Time together. Though not my favorite character, I really my favorite character is Regina, but Henry is the glue of Once Upon a Time. So anyway, what did you think of Is This Henry Mills? Did you enjoy the episode? I thought it was great. What did you think about how Gothel was defeated? Were you bummed out that Cecil, that uh, Cillier was killed so easily? What did you think about the time travel aspect? There's a lot to discuss. So share your thoughts and comments below. I'm looking forward to what you guys have to say, and we'll talk real soon. All right, guys.